Private investigators of Reddit, what is a case you've taken on that went wildly out of hand and escalated into something much larger than you initially expected? Last year, I was 17. I pretended to be a private investigator, just for fun and my neighbor gave me a tenner to go look for his missing cat, I guess he just wanted me to have some fun, and I was just fooling around, and I was pretty sure I wouldn't find anything. But damn did I find something. At the bottom of my street there was an old abandoned retirement home, closed a couple years, after I moved in. I went there first, and found a blood trail leading into the place. There wasn't a lot of blood, but just enough, that it could have been the cat's blood. Case in point, the building was being used by some druggies, that were hiding their operation. Just some weed, meth and coke and a couple of guns. After seeing that I shat myself, because I was only going into the whole pie thing as a joke. I anonymously tipped off the police who raided the place. Apparently one of the guys accidentally attacked the cat who started to wail loudly, and he was scared people would come to investigate. He couldn't bring himself to kill the cat, so he dragged it inside, and forgot to clean the blood away. It was one of the most thrilling, yet terrifying things, that I had ever gotten myself into. But hey, at least the cat lived, and my neighbor got her back. It's 2017. If you're a private investigator you aren't on the streets solving zany mysteries, you're googling shit for two weeks, and not much else. I'm a biralogal who investigates backgrounds of witnesses for our cases. I found someone who was pretending to be someone else who died as a kid. My boss alerted the feds, and they investigated, and found out he had faked his death 20 years before to avoid a embezzlement trial. He got convicted for the false identity, because he filed taxes in the fake name. Not sure about the original embezzlement charge. He was a witness in a financial case involving the secretary, BTW. I was shooting heroin, and reading the fountainhead in the front seat of my privately owned police cruiser, when a call came in. I put a quarter in the radio to activate it. It was the chief. Bad news, detective. We got a situation. What? Is the mayor trying to ban trans fats again? Worse. Somebody just stole 447 million dollars worth of bitcoins. The heroin needle practically fell out of my arm. What kind of monster would do something like that? Bitcoins are the ultimate currency, virtual, anonymous, stateless. They represent true economic freedom, not subject to arbitrary manipulation by any government. Do we have any leads? Not yet. But mark my words, we are going to figure out who did this, and we are going to take them down, provided someone pays us a fair market rate to do so. Easy, chief, I said. Any rate the market offers is, by definition, fair. He laughed. That's why you're the best I got, Lasowski. Now you get out there, and find those bitcoins. Don't worry, I said. I'm on it. I put a quarter in the siren. Ten minutes later, I was on the scene. It was a normal office building, strangled on all sides by public sidewalks. I hopped over them and went inside. Home Depot presents the police. I said, flashing my badge and my gun and a small picture of Ron Paul. Nobody move unless you want to. They didn't. Now, which one of you punks is going to pay me to investigate this crime? No one spoke up. Come on, I said. Don't you all understand that the protection of private property is the foundation of all personal liberty? It didn't seem like they did. Seriously, guys. Without a strong economic motivator, I'm just going to stand here and not solve this case. Cash is fine, but I'd prefer being paid in gold bullion or autographed pendulet posters. Nothing. These people were stonewalling me. It almost seemed like they didn't care that a fortune in computer money invented to buy drugs was missing. I figured I could wait them out. I lit several cigarettes indoors. A pregnant lady coughed, and I told her that secondhand smoke is a myth. Just then, a man in glasses made a break for it. Subway eat fresh and freeze, scumbag. I yelled. Too late. He was already out the front door. I went after him. Stop right there. I yelled as I ran. He was faster than me, because I always try to avoid stepping on public sidewalks. Our country needs a private sidewalk voucher system. But, thanks to the incestuous interplay between our corrupt federal government and the public sidewalk lobby, it will never happen. I was losing him. Listen, I'll pay you to stop. I yelled. 
what would you consider an appropriate price point for stopping? I'll offer you a thirteenth of an ounce of gold and a gently worn back quote bob bar back quote zero eight feet extra large long sleeve men's t-shirt. He turned. In his hand was a revolver that the constitution said he had every right to own. He fired at me and missed. I pulled my own gun, put a quarter in it, and fired back. The bullet lodged in a U. S. P. S. Mailbox less than a foot from his head. I shot the mailbox again. On purpose. Alright, alright. The man yelled, throwing down his weapon. I give up, cop. I confess. I took the bitcoins. Why'd you do it? I asked, as I slapped a pair of Oikos Greek yogurt presents handcuffs on the guy. Because I was afraid. Afraid? Afraid of an economic future free from the pernicious meddling of central bankers, he said. I'm a central banker. I wanted to cold cock the guy. Years ago, a central banker killed my partner. Instead, I shook my head. Let this be a message to all your central banker friends out on the street, I said. No matter how many bitcoins you steal, you'll never take away the dream of an open society, based on the principles of personal and economic freedom. He nodded, because he knew I was right. Then he swiped his credit card, to pay me for arresting him. I actually have something for this. I don't have my license, but I work in a pie office. I'm the only administrative staff member. It's basically me, and my Vietnam vet boss in a Ron Swanson April Ludgate kind of situation. A story he told me recently comes to mind. He and his partner were once hired to sweep a house, and look for any valuables. They agreed to the case, before knowing the full extent of the damage to the home, because the lawyers were willing to pay well, and our castle load was small at the time. The home was owned by a man who inherited a large fortune, because his father had invested in a little movie, that went on to become one of the biggest horror franchises of all time. The son never worked a day in his life. He had a big mansion out in the Bonnies. No one ever saw him, or his wife, because they spent all of their time inside. The home was now empty, because he went nuts, and murdered his wife and their dog. He was serving life in prison and the family's estate needed the home cleared. When my boss and his partner got in there they realized how bad it was. For years this guy and his wife had been shooting up drugs in the house. Every square inch of the mansion was covered in trash. After binging on drugs and alcohol the two would puke, and then just cover the vomit with trash and leave it there. The same went for the dog shit and piss. This went on for years. In addition to the puke and animal waste there were needles littered through the trash. My boss had to buy hazmat suits to sweep the home, and look for valuables. Apparently, there was a ton of diamond and gold jewelry just thrown right in with the filth. At one point they found a table behind a door, that was missed by the forensic crew completely covered in the wife's blood from where he had mutilated the body. They also found an entire room full of many thousand dollar kiln and ceramics supplies, all under shade. I guess the guy decided he wanted to become a master potter before quickly abandoning that pursuit to become a fucking murderer. They could only access the home through one exterior door that wasn't blocked. When they eventually walked around the exterior of the home they found that the guy had purchased himself a shark cage. As in, he decided he wanted to become a shark photographer, and ignoring the fact that he didn't live right on the ocean, bought a shark cage, and stuck it in the yard. Eventually, people started to invade the grounds and steal stuff from the home, and one day the shark cage just disappeared. This is the first one that came to mind, because it just escalated so much as he relayed the story to me. It's hard for me to tell a lot of these stories, because of our confidentiality policy, but if I think of any more I can tell I'll edit. My boss has other crazy stories from working private security for Paris Hilton, Snoop Dogg, and the girls gone wild guy and we have a few instances of having to serve papers to crazy people. This was a pretty long time ago, but I was hired by one of my closest family friends. He and my mother knew each other for what seemed like forever, to find his wife and daughter, after they went missing. My friend was rich, like nobility rich, if we had those in California, and we thought his brother had something to do with it, they were twins, but the brother had gotten into some really bad stuff a few years earlier. We were all frantic, and I made the stupid decision, to follow him into Golden Gate Park in San Francisco by myself. This was back in the 90s, and at the time Golden Gate Park wasn't that safe, but I thought I could take care of myself. 
he ended up spotting me, and then I spent the next 10 years as a koi fish in the tea gardens. But things are better now, I'm dating a cat. Not a pee. I, but did have cases in both middle and high school. I didn't get paid other than in favors and or lunches. The way this worked, is someone would tell me their story and I'd give advice. This ranged from school stuff, to love, and even revenge advice once in a while. They'd have to decide, whether or not to do it themselves, since I wouldn't do anything to stop or make them do whatever. Well, this was one that ended in revenge. A guy who's a player comes to me on the bus ride home, and asked how to get revenge, on his three ex-girlfriends who all dumped him, when they found out he was dated all three at the same time, for dumping him. I tell him he deserved to take his lumps, and he was an idiot for dating three popular girls at once. He shouldn't try to take revenge on any of them. Well, he didn't listen to me, and went about getting payback on his own. He also didn't do the favor I asked. About two weeks later, all three of the girls come to me to ask how to get payback on him for his payback. They buy me lunch and one does a small favor for me. I tell them a good revenge plan. Two out of three go about my plan, and I get to sit back and watch the train wreck of events unfold. He gets public humiliated for the next month. The last girl goes back to dating him. 